Hi everyone, I'm back with another video for you to keep practicing continuous time signals and systems together through some simple exercises. I'm Gio, an assistant professor at UPF in Barcelona. On my channel, I upload theory and tutorial classes on signals and systems, so if you want to learn the fundamentals of signals and systems in a limited time, this is the right channel for you. So let's get started now. The first exercise we'll solve today is displayed right on this slide. So we consider a system that is defined by a certain input-output relation. So here we have uh, that y of t is calculated from the input x of t as the integral between t minus 2 and t plus 2 of x of tau d tau, where tau in this case is just the integration variable. And the exercise uh, requires us to determine h of t, which is the impulse response of such system, and to reason whether the system is stable or not and whether it's causal or not. So let's start with determining h of t. So notice that the output y of t uh, is the integral between t minus 2 and t plus 2 of x of tau d tau, which means it's the area of the input x of t calculated over an interval that has duration 4. So in general, the interval is between t minus 2 and t plus 2. So the value of t will determine the interval over which we calculate the area of x of t. So to determine h of t, I just rewrite the expression uh, for y of t, which is the integral of x. And I notice that this can be um, written as the difference between two different integrals. So one running between minus infinity and t plus 2, and the other one running between minus infinity and t minus 2. Right, I can further manipulate these two integrals as follows. So by using step functions, the function u of t or the heaviside function, if you're not familiar with it, I recommend you to watch in previous exercise videos or the uh, theory classes videos. So uh, I can rewrite the integral um, by making it running from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity, but employing the step function that defines the integration boundary. So in this case, uh, for a boundary between minus infinity and t plus 2, I'm going to use the step function u of t plus 2 minus tau, because this function is non-zero only when uh, tau is smaller than uh, t plus 2, which is what I look for. And for the second one, it's just the same thing. I'm going to use the step function u of t minus 2 minus tau, because this is non-zero when tau is smaller than t minus 2. Right. So let's draw um, a representation for these two step functions. Uh, the one you see in red is u of t plus 2 minus tau. So it's 1 until t plus 2 and then it's 0. Similarly in green you see u of t minus 2 minus tau, right? So if we um, put together these two integrals now for convenience, we find the integral between minus infinity and infinity of the difference between these two step functions multiplied by x of tau d tau. And that's the expression for our y of t. But we know that y of t is given by the convolution between x of t and h of t, whatever h of t is. So by noticing that, we know that the expression in the square brackets is basically h of t minus tau. It's what would be inside the convolution integral. So by following these simple steps, we have basically found h of t minus tau. Because we're looking for h of t, well, with a simple change of variable, we can find that h of t is u of t plus 2 minus u of t minus 2. So let's draw a representation for h of t. This is what it looks like. It's uh, just basically a rectangular function. Uh, it's a signal that is 0 uh, from minus infinity to minus 2. Then it's 1 between minus 2 and 2. And then it's 0 again from plus 2 to plus infinity. So let's now move to uh, point number B, where we need to reason whether the system is stable or not. So to study the stability of a system, we know that one way is to check whether the impulse response is absolutely integrable. And in this case, if we calculate the integral of the um, magnitude of the step response, well, we get simply 4 because, um, sorry, of the impulse response. We get 4 because it's the integral between minus 2 and 2 of 1. So 4 is clearly uh, limited, therefore we can conclude that the system is stable. What about causality? So for causality, we notice that h of t, the impulse response, is non-zero for negative times, in particular when t is between minus 2 and 0. Therefore, the system is not causal. 
Let's move on to another exercise now. So in this case, we have three subsystems, which we denote as H1, H2, and H3. And an overall system that is uh, basically constructed by putting two of them in parallel and then uh, the parallel in cascade with, uh, with the third one, okay? So what does this look like? If we try to draw it, we have two systems in parallel, H1 and H2. So our input X of T goes through both of them. Um, and, and, and then the parallel is given by the difference between them. And what comes out of the parallel is supposed to be in cascade with H3 of T. And then uh, the output of H3 of T is the output of the overall system Y of T. So here in light blue, we can denote the overall system, okay? Cool. So uh, let's determine the impulse response of the overall system. How to do that? Well, we have that it will be given by uh, the parallel of H1 and H2, which is the difference of their impulse responses. Uh, convolution with H3 of T, which is a system that is put in cascade with the parallel, right? So if we do the, the calculations, which are rather simple, we substitute expressions for each of these impulse responses. We have a difference of the two step functions, u of t plus 3 minus u of t minus 5, convolution with a delta. And if we recall the properties of the uh, delta function, we know that a convolution with a delta uh, basically provides a shift in time. It anticipates or delays uh, the original signal. In this case, by quantity Td. So what we obtain is u of t minus Td plus 3 minus u of t minus Td minus 5. If we want to draw this, uh, in this simple example for Td equals 0, well, we have a rectangular function. Uh, which is 1 uh, within a certain interval and 0 elsewhere. Okay, cool. Now let's determine the values of Td for which the overall system is causal. So uh, for the overall system to be causal, we need the impulse response H of T to be 0 for all negative times. And as you can see in the figure on the right, this is true when Td minus 3 is positive. So when TD is uh, larger than 3, basically. So we have already answered question B. Now question C, which asks us uh, whether each subsystem and the overall system um, are stable or unstable. So again, how to check that? We need to look uh, at whether the impulse response of each system is absolutely integrable or not. So let's start with system H1. So I calculate the integral of the magnitude of H1 of T in dt. Okay, this is the integral of the step function, which I can conveniently rewrite as an integral running between minus 3 and infinity, which is where that step function is non-zero. And, and this integral is clearly infinity. So this subsystem is unstable. Okay, what about H2 of t? In a very similar manner, I calculate the integral of uh, h2 in absolute value and it's again the integral of another step function this time running between 5 and plus infinity but the, that doesn't change the outcome because this integral is still unbounded therefore this second system in the parallel is unstable too what about h3 of t so i do the same thing with h3 of t but h3 if you recall is delta of t minus td and the integral of a delta, the area of a delta is 1. In this case, it's finite. So I can conclude that the system H3 is stable. And what about the um, combination of these systems? What about the overall system constructed, as you see in the picture on the left? Uh, is that stable or not? So we do the same thing all over again. So we calculate the integral of h of t um, in absolute value dt this time, h of t is represented on the right of the slide. And you see that this integral is basically the area of that uh, light blue rectangular signal. And that area is just 8, okay? So uh, whatever the value of td is. So 8 is finite, so we can conclude that the overall system is stable. So uh, in this video, we have practiced basic concepts of continuous time signals and systems such as causality and stability. Um, I recommend watching the other exercise videos as well as my theory classes to better understand the fundamentals of signals and systems. And since more videos are coming, do subscribe to this channel and you will be the first one to know when I upload something new. See you in the next videos.